one of the interesting, challenging features of the Haggadah and our Minhogam, our customs, is that the first, whenever the first night of Pesach falls out, that will be the same day that Tisha B'Av, which is a day of mourning, a day of remembering the destruction of the temples and so many other tragedies in Jewish history, Lo Aleinu. What, pray tell, could that have to do with Pesach to the extent that we, the egg that we dip in the salt water is recollecting, remembering, bringing to our attention and focus the cycle of human existence and the bitter taste. How, how, does, that, how does that work? Okay, we have the moro, but the, the moro is then overcome. We'll talk about that in Yetz Hashem yet. Tisha B'av, we've tried to liken it to two kinds of companies, two kinds of corporations that do exceedingly well during the, during the years of, uh, that the economy is thriving. And one of these companies does brilliantly during the, the years of uh, great, great success. But it doesn't have a plan for recessions, let alone depressions. Another company does well during the good years, but has a plan for the recessions and depressions, the cycles in human affairs, especially in economies, and with all the predictions and anticipations of the economists, somehow keeps coming back. What is it that one father who visited his son in a major university, they had Father and Sunday, and went to the same economics class with the same economics professor that the after the class, the instructor remembered the father and said, what do you think? He said, the questions were the same questions you were asking. He said, yeah, but the answers, we're trying different answers. No answer, somehow. That the, the spin of the, of the dreidel of the economy, and one company has a game plan for the, for the years of super success, and one company does not, even though it's doing much better than the, than the company who has the plan, brilliantly, but they don't have that plan. If I were to invest, I would invest in the company that has the plan for the recession, because it's inevitable. It's going to happen. There are cycles in human affairs that we are not in control of. With all of our data, information, and take a look back at what everybody was saying before the dot-com debacle in O2, what everybody was saying about the economies uh, going through the ceiling in uh, 2006 and 2007 and then 2008, the, the meltdown. Right? The same economists right, talk differently. <laughs> and again, not very long afterwards. And who could have predicted the, what we've lived through, are living through yet in the COVID situation and how that would impact the global community? So the Rebbein Shalom is telling us, Moshe Rabbeinu already has taught us 
the Rebbein Hashem has told him that Klal Yisrael are going to go through bull markets and bear markets in spiritually in the history of Klal Yisrael. And that they will quickly bottom out. What is going to remain unique is not that those who, who try and accommodate themselves to the goalless, take the line of least resistance. What is going to be amazing is how many don't and that Klal Yisrael, conceptually, ideologically, there will always be a core that will continue. And that core is, as we say, on Tisha B'Av, that they'll be the Tisha B'Avs of history. And we're building that in. How ironic it seems that at the Seder table that we don't chew the bone of the Paschal Lamb so as not to, not to break the atmosphere of being aristocratic, and yet we dip an egg into salt water because this night will be the same night it's going to be Tisha B'Av, but we have a plan for Tisha B'Av. Our plan for Tisha B'Av is that Yemi Yohan Novi gave us an Eicha, we have the Halochas, and we incorporate the bear market into the f- game plan of how Klal Yisrael is going to go through history. There's a portion in the Haggadah that we read. That is what has stood us in good stead. Not one has come up against us to destroy us, annihilate us. What is it referring to? That is what. So most Mepharshim say it's the previous paragraph that Shomer Hafta Chosr, the Rebbe promised, committed in the covenantal pact to Avram Avinu and then reiterated it, confirmed it to Yitzhak and then to, to Yaakov, that that covenantal pact, however grim and dim our chances seem at any point in history, yet Klai Yisrael continues to break all of the norms and as we've referred to often, as Rabbi Yaakov Emden says in his Siddha, that the, the Nisim, the miracles, of Klal Yisrael in, in Golas since the destruction of Bayez Sheni and survival, as was noted in Chazal. It's one calf, one seh, that in the midst of 70 wolves, and yet it survives. Non-Jews noted this and have noted it. And Rabbi Yaakov Emden says in the Siddha that in his Siddha that it's a greater ness that I told than even Yitzhiya Mitzrayim in history. So, but that's because the Rebbe Nishon committed it in the covenantal pact, didn't say how many, how much suffering, how much that there would be suffering was predicted. It was anticipated, but the exact price who is going to pay that price and how it's going to be paid, we, we have a range of free will that we can choose where and how we are going to participate in this scenario. There is, I would like to suggest, another interpretation of Ahisha Omda, Labasena Balonu. It is interesting that twice it says 
שלא יכול בוועד אומן לנו לאכל עושינו, אלא בכל דור ודור עומדים לנו לאכל עושינו, איזה דופליקיישן זה. Could have been more, more condensed the language. It seems to be a replication. The end of Parshas Bukhu Kosai, there's a Zohar that the Malochim came to Rishim Bayachoy and said, Your son, Rabbi Loza, is Machadish al Chidish. And the whole world is rushing. That Posek in the Teichacha says, Lo ma'astim lo ga'altim lechal lo som. I've not found them so abominable and so despicable as to totally annihilate them. Brinkmanship, up to the precipice, suffering, very few left, and as Rameya Simcha says in Parshas Vayera, the tzaddikim, tamidich echomim, the loyalists, should, should not be intimidated, frightened, even if there are only a few left. It was called in Yeshua against, against the, the tzibor. There'll always be just a few, just called in Yeshua made it out to El Yisrael. But the Revenishim will do, use individuals that they will like to spark and ignite the awareness, understanding for the whole nation when the time comes, Be'ita, either in the outermost date, that might be that energy either will be in fact the Be'ita in its time when the coming back to the Gula time of Pesach, or that time will energize, Pesach will energize that it could be Ahashina, we can make it happen sooner. But we shouldn't be intimidated and overwhelmed. Said the son of Rav Shimba Yechoir Veloza, that yes, Lo ma'astim velo ga'altim, I have not found them so despicable, abano, lechalosom, because of their status of color. A king has a protocol. Certain places he doesn't go, even if he can get a bargain, even if he can find some interesting experience. Inappropriate. A king. But, if abductors kidnap the color of the king, he goes after them wherever they go. Similarly, the Rebbeinishon follows us into Golas, the Shechina, Imo Anochi Betzora, the Chalosom, because of their status of color. Bibi Emily, that that may be the second reference here in the in the Hagoda. Vihisha Omdo Labosenu Velano, that's what stood us in good stead. The Avtocha, the promise, the covenantal pact, the commitment, the irrevocable relationship. Shloechod Bilvad, not one came up against us. Omanalenu Chalosenu to destroy us, to annihilate us. But now the second one. Why the rep- repetition? in each generation they come up against us and what do they find? and they find our status of color then extricates us because the Mephoshim also say a Malach there was, there was a problem in Malochim coming into Mitzrayim, that the, the tumor, the defilement was so, so great that it could injure the spiritual purity of the even Amalach. And so, the chalosenu, that status of kala that the Rebbein Islam has designated Klai in relation to 
to the Rebani Shalom, as we find in Shira Shirim, which we read on Pesach, that that will be the relationship, a relationship which is a bond which goes throughout history and, and survives even the, the great challenges of Klad Yisrael in history. It can be Be'ito, it could be Achishena. Perhaps that's part of the reason that Chometz is chosen rather than Chelev, rather than that fat which is also, which is prohibited to eat from the animal, rather than Nevela, an animal that wasn't shechted, wasn't slaughtered ritually, halachically, or some kind of other Isa Achila, because it's all about timing. Chometz, like we said earlier, we're going to do acrobatics to fulfill the mitzvah's timing. And that is why Chometz itself is all about timing. Timing is before the, the yeast has inflated the, this, this wheat, before it's acted on it in a... We stop it. That's why Bechipozon, that it had to be reflected in us seizing the moment, in us taking a certain initiative to, to understand that the Rebbe Nisham has given us the first mitzvah that's given to Klad Yisrael is about timing. A Chodesh that we have the ability to control time that the psak of Bezdin, the psak control time means, they control the resources within time and the boundaries within being human. But even so, Klayaso can supersede the normal limitations and the psak, the Yerushalmi teaches us that the physical world will respond to the psak of Bezdin, and there'll be a change in the realities of the, of the environment as a result of the decision of Bezdin. And so part of, the, of why Shabbos HaGodl is called Shabbos HaGodl is that it's, if it's the day, the time of Be'ito, when the ultimate gula is either going to happen or being energized to happen whenever it can happen and does happen, if it's Achishena, if we will take the initiative to be proactive, is that moment of ultimate gula, ultimate redemption, is referred to as Hayom HaGodl V'haneirazeh. The God says that it is, there has been a judgment. Why is there going to be another judgment that we're taught there'll be another judgment at the end of days? Because only then all the data is in. Of course, to the Rebbe Nishonim, it's all known and seen. But as this material world plays itself out, the, all of the extensions and consequences of what I put into motion generations later will ultimately be seen. That's Godel. That's the cumulative coming together of all of that, all of those consequences. That's a Yom HaGodel. That's why it's Shabbos, that Shabbos, and in fact, the Pesach is referred to as Shabbos. Number of reasons that that is discussed, but part of the part of it, Rameh Simcha says, it's the mitzvah of Tashpisu, of uh, canceling out any usage of the of the of the chametz, negating the chametz. 
But another reason is that Yantif, we have been given a certain, a certain amount of control over time using the halacha that Bezin can make such a decision which will change the consequences. Shabbos is Kviyavakam, it's a fixed reality that comes around every seventh day, whatever Bezin says or does. And so, the, we say in davening, by Yontif we say, Mekadosh Yisrael, the Jews are sanctified, Vahazmanim and time, because now Bezin has been given that, that kind of a permit, a license, a control over, over time. Shabbos is Mekadosh as has Shabbos. The Rebbein Shalom sanctifies the Shabbos. That's a fixed reality that corresponds to the, the sense of the irrevocable relationship that can't be tampered with. But there's another reason that we might suggest that why it's called Shabbos HaGodl. Shabbos HaGodl, difference between a child so Mufla Samach Leish, he's an intelligent child, he's already fulfilling mitzvahs, of course, father is being Mechanechim, and he has certain kind of Chiyuvim, whether it's only the Rabbonin or the Raisa, that's, that's a discussion. But what, is, what happens when he moves from 12 plus to 13? There's a, now he becomes a Metzuvah V'yaisa. He becomes commanded to do the mitzvahs. He's obligated to do the mitzvahs. And contrary to the conventional wisdom, Torah teaches that Chazal teaches, Godel ha somebody who is commanded to do, is on a bigger and a higher level. Why 13? Why is 13 the year? There are all kinds of mystical reasons, but one angle of perception, one gate of entry, is that the child up till, up till Bar Mitzvah is only eight Sahara. It's amazing. It's the, the most exquisite paradox is that it's Ein Oilam, Neskayim, the world only exists because of the sanctity, the purity, the innocence of Kedusha, of the Hevel, Pihem, Shal Tinerkes, Shal Beis Rabbam, children learning, but it's only Yetzirah. But it's not a Yetzirah that's in conflict with a Yetzirah Tov. problem of a Yetzirah is that it, when it's in conflict with the Yetzirah Tov, that happens at 13. Why does it start out that way? Maybe, maybe. Maybe it's because what part of what is being ingrained in us is that this Yetzirah is redeemable. It is able to be harnessed, captured in the proper conduit that ultimately it can be sanctified. And just like we quoted in the name of Gedele Yichsidus, the Rizhina, I believe, was one who developed the idea that the Yud Gimel Midas, the 13 Midas of Rabbi Yishmoel, end with contradiction, right? Shteik suvim amakrishim, two psukim that contradict each other, the correspondence to the Yud Gimel Midas of Rachamim, that it's the nake, lo yenake, it'll be cleansed, won't be cleansed, where Chazal reconciled it by saying, with tshuva or without tshuva. Yud Gimel Midas, of Rabbi Yishmael, it needs another Pasek to come in. So it's also a projection, said the Rishina, of how there's going to be an unfolding of the generations in the Messianic era, in Ikva Siddha Mashiach. It'll be a generation of contradictions, and those contradictions will need to be reconciled. Rabbi Tzodik develops the idea that the same Neshamas that were by the marble and the door a daya in the middle of those in the shamas will come back and they're going to be a mixture of positive and negative, which seems to be 
an amazing, the accurate description of our generation, the contradictions and paradoxes that we see that abound all over. And so the child now can capture, use that energy, and use it in a positive way. Call yourself is being challenged, given more resources, because there's an intrusion, an infiltration of the, of the negative into our environment, into our, into our atmosphere, and we breathe an air which is different, but the Rebbe gives us El Yisrael, but the Rebbe gives us, are we there yet? We're not here then. And it's superficial. I remember when there were those that said, ah, oh, what do we need Tishaba for? We can, we can put the kinas into the, into the Seamus. Premature. Right? How long have we been in conflict now and negotiating about those passionate Zionists, secular Zionists, many of whom we have to have our calls to tell you, gratitude for what they do do that's positive. Some I can identify, some the Rebbe Nishon will be able to identify where I can't identify it because there's much that's negative as well. To sort out that act of borer, of separating the Negative from the positive that is going to be, have to be done by the Rebbe Nishlam on that ultimate day of Gula when all of the data is in. And meantime, what do I have to work with? I have to work with Naka Loya Naka. Tshuva is the facilitator. And that Tshuva was anticipated long before the threat would be there, that the Ruach Elohim Rachefes Apnei Amoyim, the spirit of the Baruch hovered over the deep, the Medrash says it was the spirit of Mashiach which will come how? Ay the Tshuva of Kal Yisrael, returning to the sources. Shem Yitain, that this Pesach should energize the nation, every individual in the nation to be able to reconnect to the source.